What up guys, on today's episode of Santa Cruz Medicinals Radio, it's a very important episode. This is all about red meat. This is one of the most common questions I get. Brennan, I heard that red meat causes cancer, or that red meat is bad for me. Should I eat red meat? Or they see some title, some headline about red meat, or their parents say, hey, you can't eat red meat, it's bad for you. We're going to get into all of that today. We're gonna get very detailed today. We're gonna to talk about studies, we're gonna talk about research, we're gonna talk about the history of red meat and where we're at today, some of the health effects of red meat. Let's get into it. This is the perfect episode to show anybody that questions your red meat eating habit or if it's healthy, let's get it. So for context, when I'm talking about red meat, what I'm discussing is the actual flesh of animals. So these are from mammals such as beef, pork, lamb and veal yes pork is technically a red meat it is called red meat due to its reddish color this reddish color is from the higher levels of myoglobin myoglobin is very important this is a protein that carries oxygen to muscle tissues if you have low myoglobin it is not good for you red meat has been a staple in many diets throughout the world and has been a staple for human beings for millions of years, homo sapiens for millions of years homo erectus homo habilis obviously once we get past that 300 400 thousand years ago and why is red meat so essential? Well, we're gonna get into that, we're gonna get into the history, and we're also gonna discuss some of the basics around red meat. Some of the basics are that it's extremely rich in protein. It's extremely rich in various vitamins, B vitamins like B12. It's also extremely rich in riboflavin, which is another B vitamin. It's extremely rich in minerals like heme, iron, and zinc. These aren't debated things. No doctor out there would debate that it's rich in those minerals vitamins and protein. So let's just get that out of the way. That is why it is used. When you eat red meat, you're able to absorb usually around 94 to 97% of that protein. So it's a very absorbable form of protein. You do digest it fully. That is another myth that red meat somehow gets undigested or ends up in your colon. That's completely false. We're going to get into more of that, but just out the gate, wanted to get some basic stuff out of the way. So now we're going to get into why we eat red meat as a species. We're going to get into the anthropological, basically the aspects of how we ate red meat, why we eat red meat. When anthropologists talk about diet, they often refer to something called optimal foraging theory. What is this theory? This basically states that human beings are going to seek after the foods that give them the most amount of calories, the most amount of protein. Basically, when you are an early hominid, your ancestors, they are hunting mammals. They're hunting you know, buffalo, or they're hunting you know, early species of deer, stuff like that, they aren't going to go after, they're not going to spend the resources and calories going after something that isn't nutrient dense. Listen, the first cave drawings ever are of animals with spears in them. There is tremendous anthropological data of butchery sites. We know that we have been eating and prioritizing red meat. And this is for obvious reasons. It's extremely dense in calories, proteins, healthy fats, what you need to survive. If you could only survive off one food, it would be meat. It would be a full animal. It's organs, you know, the tissue from it, it's bone marrow, and the protein from the meat. It's just the best source of calories in terms of what we sought after as human beings. Because of that fact, that is a fact, that is not an anthropological uh, theory that's not uh, debated. It is a fact that we killed animals and ate their marrow, their flesh, their organs, and we did that for survival. Now, we evolve as human beings. There is evolution. What we do for millions of years basically dictates how our bodies evolve. What do I mean by that? If every single day for the next 10,000 years, everybody swam, we would start to evolve over 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, millions, hundreds of thousands of years. We would evolve to be better at swimming. There would be evolution in our eyes, evolution in our hands. We would start to evolve to be better adapted to swim. This is the same case for diet and nutrition. We have evolved to eat red meat. We've also evolved to eat vegetables and fruits and some grains. We are omnivores as human beings. So. In very recent years, over the last hundred years in all the reality, red meat has started to get demonized. It has been said that it causes heart disease, that it causes colon cancer, that it's undigestible, that vegetable sources and grain sources of calories are better for your heart health, it's all that type of stuff. So let's get into that right now. Why has this happened and where does this come from? So the first thing that everybody talks about is red meat and cholesterol, red meat and heart disease basically. It has been said by so many people that if you eat red meat, you are at a greater risk of a cardiovascular event and that you might die. Red meat is going to clog your arteries. I think we've all heard that. The research says otherwise. 
Research has questioned the direct link between red meat and these health concerns many different times. The following studies provide context and evidence to dispel this notion that red meat consumption leads to elevated cholesterol and heart disease. The first study that we want to look at is Siriri Torino, and that's from 2010. This study, published to the National Library of Medicine, conducted a meta-analysis and analyzed 21 different studies on saturated fat intake and its association with cardiovascular disease. Typically, people in modern society don't want to consume red meat because of its saturated fat content, and they fear that you know eating saturated fat is going to clog their arteries, as the Ansel Keys hypothesis. Saturated fat clogs your arteries which has now been dispelled as false. At the end of this analysis of 21 studies, the researchers found no significant evidence supporting the link between saturated fat intake from food sources and the risk of cardio cardiovascular disease. And this included red meat. So they found no association with that. The second study we get into is Astrup, and this is from 2011. This is another systematic review published to the National Library of Medicine in 2011. Researchers compared the effects of red meat consumption with other proteins on blood lipids. This is your cholesterol, stuff like that. They concluded that the negative impact in blood lipids is primarily related to the processed meat rather than fresh red meat. Unprocessed meat, and this would be your steaks, your ground beef, your lamb chops, stuff like that, versus the processed red meat, which is your salami, you know, your bacon, stuff like that. So this study highlighted the importance of considering overall dietary context and why you see so many studies where they say red meat is bad is these are survey-based studies. So they'll survey people coming out of McDonald's, they'll survey people that don't live healthy, they don't live like I do and maybe you do listening to this. They're not eating steak or ground beef after their workout, they're eating McDonald's after sitting around all day smoking cigarettes. And these associations start to come into play because they say, well, this person ate red meat and they had heart disease. So that's an association right there. So thus, red meat causes heart disease. That's not what's going on. And there is actually no study chemically proving that red meat or saturated fat causes heart disease. That is very important to note. There is no study out there chemically showing that red meat is going to clog your arteries and cause heart disease. So... In that study with the processed meats, they did confirm, you know, their theory is that nitrates and other preservatives in these processed meats can negatively affect your heart health, and there's a strong association between processed meat and heart disease. I completely agree with that. I do not think eating processed meat is good. You never see me in my posts eating tons of salami or ham or, you know, I, I don't even eat that much bacon. Do I think those foods are evil and you can never eat them? No, but I don't think making up a good part of your diet of processed meat is a good idea. When we look at organic grass-fed meat, which is what I'm eating, the nutrient profile is amazing and there are no associations between unprocessed red meat and elevated heart disease in healthy human beings. We need to look at another study. This is Micha, this is from 2012. This is again in the National Institute of Health and analyzed data from different studies to investigate the association between unprocessed red meat consumption and coronary heart disease and stroke. One of the main stigmas around red meat today is that you eat it and you get a stroke. After their analysis, they concluded there was no significant link between red meat intake and the risk of these cardiovascular outcomes. Zero. None. So there was nothing here. This scientific, re scientific review is in the National Library of Medicine. Very good study right there that we have popping up on the screen. Again, no significant risk of eating red meat in terms of heart disease. We look at another study. We're in 2015 now. This is Shin. For further scientific evidence, another meta-analysis published in 2015 examined the relationship of red meat consumption and cardiovascular disease, stroke, and heart failure. In conclusion, the study found, again, no significant association between red meat intake and these cardiovascular conditions. We get into a fifth study. I'm really trying to hammer this point home right now, guys, because this is just exhausting to deal with. We will continue to see these headlines that red meat causes heart disease. And again, I just walked you through what those are from. It's from these survey-based studies. But this is for you to be able to pull up if somebody says red meat's gonna clog your arteries and you're gonna die. It's not true. We see another 2019 study from De Souza, another meta-analysis and uh, systematic review published into the National Institute of Health by 2019, evaluated the effects of reducing red meat consumption on cardiovascular risk factors. And the study concluded that there is insufficient evidence to support the claim that reducing red meat consumption will reduce cardiovascular disease risk factors. So in individuals eating a Western diet, which does include red meat, they show no impact of reducing the red meat consumption on cardiovascular risk factors, which by their theory, you would think that taking out the red meat out of the diet would reduce cardiovascular risk factors because red meat is the evil thing, right? Well, the study found that it didn't. So cutting down on red meat in hopes of getting better cardiovascular health, 
This study shows that it does no service, it doesn't help at all. These studies just aren't referenced because they go against the narrative that so many of these health creators are pushing, that vegan is better, that soy is better, that red meat, oh, you should only eat it once or twice a month. That's not what this data shows whatsoever, and there are a lot of good studies on this. So there really is no direct link between red meat consumption and heart disease. And any data that's out there is very weak and inconsistent, and I would say it is because of the Western diet, the unhealthy man. You are studying the unhealthy man. So any correlations that you're able to draw between this person ate red meat, McDonald's, fast food, or they're just obese and they eat red meat, is not the same as you and I. Hopefully you work out a lot and you eat red meat. That is not what's going on in these studies connecting red meat to heart disease. Let's get into red meat and colon cancer. The association between red meat consumption and colon cancer is a subject of concern for many people. I hear this a lot in my comments. Oh, but I saw red meat's gonna cause colon cancer. It's undigestible, it hurts your colon. It might not hurt your heart, but it hurts your colon. Let's look at some studies. This is a study from Chan in 2011. This was published into the National Library of Medicine, and it talks about red meat and colon cancer. The researchers investigated the association between unprocessed red meat consumption, keyword unprocessed, you know I'm not a fan of processed red meat, unprocessed red meat consumption, and the risk of colon cancer. They found no significant association between the two. The results showed that individuals who consumed higher amounts of red meat did not have a higher risk of colon cancer compared to those with lowered consumption, suggesting that there is not strong evidence to support the claim that unprocessed red meat consumption is directly associated with an increased risk of colon cancer. A very good study right there, and it clearly shows that if you eat more red meat, you're not going to get colon cancer. That link is not there. And if you want a larger study than that, we get into the second study right here. This is by Etamadi. This is a 2020 large-scale study. And this is actually the exact framework that a lot of people use to demonize red meat. They analyzed, over, um, analyzed studies with over a half a million participants and found no significant association between red meat intake and colorectal cancer. The authors noted that confounding factors such as lifestyle choices and you know cigarette smoking and stuff like that, that is where much of the relationship comes from. What does that mean? In today's society, for most people, if you eat a lot of red meat, you are also unhealthy. Why is this? This is because the soy vegan agenda has been pushed so hard that many people leave it leading just a healthier lifestyle that work out more, that walk more, that do meditation, all that good stuff that we know about that I do as a heavy red meat eater, but many people don't. That is where this association is drawn from. We demonize something for the last 30, 40 years and tell people that it's unhealthy. What do people that are more inclined to live healthy than do? They might lower their you know, intake of red meat. And so they might have lower intake of colon cancer because maybe they don't smoke cigarettes. Maybe they don't drink alcohol. So that's what this study showed. Now, where does this evidence that red meat causes colon cancer come from? It mostly comes from the National Cancer Institute, which has done studies on processed meat. In 2015, they referenced a meta-analysis of 800 different studies which showed that processed meat leads to the development of colorectal cancer. And they also concluded that there was not enough evidence to conclude that red meat alone causes cancer in humans, but rather processed meats in general. Unfortunately, the headlines that get pushed out by this, I don't think it's the National Cancer Institute's fault, but it's just you know CNN and these headlines, these news organizations want to push something that'll get clicks, so they say red meat causes cancer. That's not what the data is showing. That's not at all what the data is showing. I'm sorry that you've been told that. I'm sorry that your parents maybe have especially been scammed on that. Their generation really got screwed with this. They read those titles. It's coming from a trusted source because they trust these news organizations that maybe if you're younger, you don't really trust CNN. You don't really trust these big media outlets. We know they lie a lot and they're fishing for clicks and saying that red meat is gonna kill you gets a lot more clicks than saying, and there's an association between processed red meat consumption and cancer, but unprocessed fresh red meat consumption doesn't really show that it has cancer. That's not gonna get a lot of clicks. So despite these controversies about red meat, let's look at what is actually in red meat. What is in this food that is so controversial that so many of us love and feel amazing when they eat? Well, the reason for that is it is extremely rich in protein, amino acids, B vitamins, and other vitamins and minerals like zinc and selenium that help support our overall health. Let's get into the digestibility of red meat. We're talking a remarkably high digestibility rate, 94 to 97%, meaning nearly all the protein you consume from red meat is fully digested and utilized by your body. There is no, and I repeat, no evidence out there that red meat goes undigested. This is another myth that I hear. Another myth that I hear is the acid alkaline thing, that red meat makes your body acidic. 
This is complete bullshit. Listen, your gut watching this right now, your gut is an acidic environment. If it were an alkaline environment, you would die. You also cannot change the pH level of your blood. The acid alkaline diet thing, I know it got really popular by that vegan Dr. Sebi doctor. I'm sorry, the acid alkaline thing is complete bullshit. There is no data to support that at all. And honestly, if you had an alkaline environment in your gut, you'd be extremely sick or dead, okay? So those two issues I just wanted to get out of the way right now. You can digest red meat fully, and it doesn't matter. The acid alkaline thing is complete bullshit. When we look into the vitamins and minerals in red meat, we see it's an extremely dense source of nutrients, particularly zinc, selenium, and heme iron. Heme iron is the body's preferred source of iron. Iron in vegetables is called non-heme iron, and the absorbability of heme iron is about 15 to 35%, which is amazing. And this is compared to only 2 to 10% in non-heme iron. That's not good. That's not a good absorbability. If you're trying to increase your iron levels, which are essential, you want to eat red meat. We're looking at vitamin B12. It's exclusively found in animal products. This is something that vegans cannot get from the vegan diet. You need to consume animal products to get bioavailable vitamin B12. We look at zinc, which has a crucial role in immune function protein synthesis, metabolism, hormone function, zinc is essential. And I actually don't supplement with zinc because I eat a good diet full of red meat and you get this perfect balance of copper to zinc, which play off each other. This is why I don't supplement with zinc. I get red meat. When we look into the fatty acid profile of red meat, we see it's a good source of omega-3 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids have been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease. We also see red meat containing conjugated linoleic acid, which is amazing for reducing body fat, managing inflammation, all that. So in conclusion, there really is no good evidence to support this myth that red meat causes heart disease or it's going to give you colon cancer. And it's really a shame that it's been so demonized because the reality is it's one of the most nutrient dense bioavailable sources of protein you can get your hands on. It's my number one go-to food. And I feel amazing. I'm almost 31 years old. I've been eating red meat often for a decade. And I eat other foods too. I think that vegetables are good for you. I think you can even eat some grains if you really want. We are omnivores, and this includes being able to eat red meat. You can eat chicken, you can eat fish, you can eat eggs, but you can also eat red meat. And to demonize this food group is ridiculous. I don't think it's backed in science, and I think it's backed by a lot of people lately that are trying to sell you a product. Usually that product is a mixture of soy, wheat, maybe beans, and some seed oils. And there's a lot of money in that. If they can tell you that red meat is evil, and red meat is bad, and they can sell you a Beyond Burger, they can profit off that. So be very skeptical about people saying red meat is bad for you. We have been consuming it as a human species forever, and I will continue to do so. Let me know any questions you have in the comments below, and let me know if you wanna see me dive deep into any more topics and what you want those topics to be. Appreciate you, thank you, peace.